has it happened for you that that sometimes when you're in a relationship and it can be you know your your partner it could be your family um, maybe just a, maybe a friend group and when you've been in relationship with someone or some group of people for a long time you start to almost develop your own language like not a secret code language but like where you have sh shortcut words or things that maybe other people don't understand <coughs> but you get uh, you know Adam and I have quite a few of these I'm, I'm sure um, but one that's relevant today is uh, one that that I use probably more frequently than he does and it's the word Hulk smash and it's a verb it means to do something with more force than one intended to do it with um, so for example it might be you meant to just close the door but instead you slammed it and it made a loud noise or maybe even came off its hinge a little bit and or maybe like the time that um, Adam was bringing up to me at my office at a previous church a uh, plant that I'd forgotten and it was in this cute little jar um, it was a clipping that was given to me at a spiritual retreat and it was really special and I was using it for this illustration and it was in like one of those little uh, jelly jars you know what I'm talking about with the cool little glass print you know it was really cute I liked it and um, I had managed not to kill this plant which was part of the point I was using it it was an amazing miracle and um, he came in and and he brought it into my office and he I think intended to go ta-da here you go and set it on the table instead he went here's your plant smash and the glass on the bottom just broke and lots of little pieces everywhere I was like oh well thank you for Hulk smashing that that's the kind of uh, thing that I need and that brings us to today's superhero in our Marvel series today we're gonna talk about the Incredible Hulk now in in case you are not aware of what this is about uh, this is one of the classic comics that really came about in the season of the uh, early 60s when Stan Lee was working at Marvel Comics and he was the creator one of the creators also of the Incredible Hulk and it came out its first issue in uh, May of 1962 didn't take off great right away actually um, it was canceled after six episodes um, it was kind of rocky at the beginning but later it picked up it got a new comic book of its own a new title it actually was in a, a became a TV series in the 1970s and since then has been a big part of the Marvel Universe especially the Avengers films the Hulk is an you know integral part of that now the Hulk's story is that it starts with a man named dr. Bruce Banner he's a scientist and he is working on something called a gamma bomb and it is testing day and so they get everything ready and they're looking from their safe distance inside the building and they start the countdown when a random teenager runs in to the testing site and dr. Bruce tells his assistant Igor who spoilers turns out to be a communist spy one would never have guessed by that name and he says to Igor to stop the countdown he runs out to shoo this kid off and you know give him a finger pointing and say this was really dangerous get out of here 
and instead the, the assistant does not stop the countdown, Dr. Bruce runs out there. He manages to get the kid to safety, like in a, a safe trench, but he doesn't make it in time. And the bomb goes off, and gamma radiation fills his body. And at first, it looks like nothing happened. Like, he's okay. He survives. He doesn't have burns. He's all in one piece. He's conscious. Wow, this is a miracle. He's fine. Later, he discovers in the coming days that something happens when he gets really emotional. When he gets really angry, all of a sudden, he just starts to explode in a way. He grows like one of those foamy critters and um, rips his clothes into pieces and he becomes a giant green muscly creature who then acts pretty much like a toddler and just has a tantrum and smashes everything, everything in sight. Oftentimes bad guys, but oftentimes lots of other stuff too. And the, the Hulk just goes well, kind of like a, a temper tantrum and smash, smash, and buildings are down and he's flying, you know, throwing cars and smashing them together. And then when the situation is over and he returns to his form as Dr. Bruce Banner, uh, Bruce is often very embarrassed and remorseful for the damage that he caused for the immaturity that he showed for his actions. The key to the Hulk character is this issue of handling anger, of dealing with anger. And I found that Christians have a problematic relationship with anger. Oftentimes, Christians feel that it is taboo. It is, is not allowed to be angry or that, you know, good Christians wouldn't be angry. And especially in our culture, you know, children are taught oftentimes to suppress their anger. I mean, it, it comes off well-intentioned. We are trying to teach them not to bite or hit or act out, you know, not to throw temper tantrums. But a lot of times, the message that gets internalized and probably has for a lot of us was mad is bad. I shouldn't be mad. And what that turns into, mad is bad, is the message, and then I feel mad, it turns into I'm bad. And that is a shame spiral. Christians often don't want to talk about anger. And I've found especially when it comes to being angry at God. A lot of times, even if we're like, okay, you know, anger can be dealt with, it's just an emotion, you're not bad for being that way, but you can't say anything about being mad at God. You can't be mad at God. If you were a good, faithful person, you wouldn't be mad at God. That's absolutely not true. That is a total myth. And I can absolutely testify, firsthand experience, that if saying something like, God, you've really pissed me off this time, even with more colorful words than that, does not get you hit with lightning 
or a tornado form above your head or anything like that. Because God can handle that. God doesn't get God's feelings hurt very easily. Which is a surprise to some of us. But that's what it says in Scripture. There's lots of examples, lots of examples in Scripture about uh, being angry. And, for example, there's a bunch of them in Psalms and in Proverbs. For example, in Proverbs 14, it says, Short-tempered people make stupid mistakes, and schemers are hated. Stupidity is the lot of the naive, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Patience leads to abundant understanding, but impatience leads to stupid mistakes. Another translation of that last verse I like, the NRSV says, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding but one who has a hasty temper exalts folly. There's many, many more than that. Psalms, uh, Psalm 4, verse 4 says, Be angry, but do not sin. And the Apostle Paul um, kind of riffed off of that when in Ephesians chapter 4, he writes, be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun set on your anger. Don't provide an opportunity for the devil. We can see, for example, in the person of Jesus, in his life, an example of times that he was angry and that he did not deny it or pretend not to be angry. For example, in uh, Mark chapter 3, he has encountered some uh, scribes, Pharisees, legalists, let you, let's say, religious people, and, and he, it says, looks at them with anger. Now we can't know exactly what Jesus was thinking or feeling because he didn't leave us his diary, unfortunately. Sometimes I think that would be really helpful, but maybe there's a reason we are not supposed to have that. But we can gather by these writings in the, in the Gospels and in his actions that he never said being angry is bad. Anger is a human emotion. It is. It just exists. It is neither bad nor good in and of itself. What one does with it is what makes it bad or good how one deals with one's anger or chooses not to deal with anger is what determines where anger leads. You're probably familiar with that one time that, that Jesus was in the last week of his life and he went into the temple and he was really upset about what the money changers were doing, and even threw some tables around. Kind of sounds like a, you know, hulk sewed but he didn't hurt anyone. That's important to note. He did run some people off. He did, he did kind of um, tell them off. He said, this is unacceptable. What you're doing is wrong. He even at times, when he was confronting evil or injustice, said, God is angry with 
evil and injustice and oppression. So scripture is clear on this. And a scholar named um, Dr. Andy Lester, who was a professor at the seminary I went to, Bright, um, and the professor who wrote the book that I've been using, our Marvelous Myths book, Dr. Dalton, quotes Andy Lester on this because Dr. Lester's, uh, one of his areas of specialization was in pastoral care and anger. And he wrote a book called The Angry Christian, if you ever want to dig deeper into that. It's a really, really good book where he breaks that down and he says, Scripture is clear that when anger does lead to suffering, when it is harmful, it is not underlined and italicized, not because anger itself is automatically bad, but because the anger is either unnecessary or expressed harmfully. Dr. Lester goes on to say that actually anger can be a gift. What? Not just something that we have to like walk on eggshells around and deal with carefully, but a gift. It is a human emotion, a God-given emotion. This is part of how God designed us. Anger, which our body often recognizes before our brain does, anger can be a clue that we are being threatened, that we are in danger. Anger can be useful. And expressing anger is appropriate. When done in a healthy way, we should express our anger. Dr. Lester says, it's even a good idea to express anger to God that expressing anger to God, toward God, and admitting this, God, I'm mad at you, can help us have more healthy and honest relationships with God. Have you ever had a relationship in which you or the other party refused to acknowledge ever that you were angry? going to take a wild guess here and say, probably didn't go well. I have not seen that work. Because pretending we don't feel something that we do feel is a recipe for disaster in relationship. That is not good communication. And I have yet to find an incident in which ignoring something actually makes it not exist. It's just not a thing. Stuffing it down, pretending it's not there, saying, it's bad, I couldn't feel that, not going to change at all. That is not going to improve anything. It may change, but it will do so negatively. Repressed anger, anger that we stuff down and don't acknowledge. It's kind of like bacteria that loves little dark places. And, and it will hide and multiply. And then all of a sudden, one day, when the day before, you didn't notice anything, there was no evidence, it's fine. And all of a sudden, you have a system-wide infection. The whole thing's going down. The whole body has been poisoned. The whole relationship is now in an explosive status. We 
have to learn how to deal with our anger. Because having it, or rather not having it, isn't an option when we're human. In fact, Dr. Lester goes so far as to say that not only is anger and being angry not a sin, he says, from a Christian perspective, not being angry at evil, injustice, and suffering is sinful. Not only is being angry not sinful, there are times where not being angry is sinful. Because if we see people hurting, if we see people suffering, and we don't become angry, that means we have successfully desensitized or dehumanized them. And those are sinful. That is wrong. So, the key for us, just as it is with the Hulk, is learning how to deal with anger. And the very first step for both the Hulk and us is acknowledging, recognizing that it exists, naming it for what it is, and acknowledging it. I mean, that's kind of more than one step, but I'm just trying to simplify here. In um, the comics in the early 90s, they revealed some more of Dr. Bruce's backstory. And then they, they really went into that and developed that in the 2003 movie, Hulk. We learn that little Bruce Banner's father was a really angry and abusive man. And one day, in a fit of rage, he killed Bruce's mother. So little Bruce learned being mad is terrible. Being mad is not okay. And he did not want to become like his father to the point that he went, well, a little too far in the other direction, and he stuffed down his emotions. No, there is no chance that I'm going to be like my father. I'm not angry. I'm never angry. And what the Hulk does, or Dr. Banner does, is goes to therapy. He gets professional help, and he learns that his inability to deal with his anger is one of the factors that caused the Hulk to exist. That that is a direct result of his inability to deal with anger. And so, over the course of time, the Hulk learns to be a little bit more controlled. Uh, Dr. Banner learns that the Hulk is part of him, that he can't just cut it out like a cancer, that he has to live with him because he is him. And we have to not pretend we don't have anger, but learn to live with it, starting with acknowledging it and then being honest with God, talking to God about it. I mean, if you think about it, God already knows our thoughts and feelings. So if we don't tell God that we are mad at God, when God already knows that, we're hiding something or trying to, unsuccessfully, obviously. And that doesn't do a relationship any good. So, 
We should acknowledge that and talk to God about it. And then we should, when we do have an, an instance where we become angry, we feel anger, like I said, often our body notices before we do, and we need to employ those, those stalling techniques. Buy us some time. Maybe you've heard, you know, take a deep breath and count to ten. Something like that. We need to give ourselves time to get to the bottom of it. What am I feeling right now? I think I'm angry. Why am I angry? And sometimes it may come quickly. Sometimes it may take a day or two. My suggestion is when you're in that instance, when there is a conflict and you're angry, you don't make any choices. Instead, you say, I'm going to need to get back to you. And you step away. You step away from it. And when you have calmed down your body, it will calm down your mind. And then you can go back and say, okay, I discovered I was angry because I got defensive. And that comes from a place where I, I feel insecure and I felt threatened. Could we talk some more? And you work through it. Sometimes we need to call in professionals. There's nothing wrong with that. So we need to acknowledge, honestly express to God, and then work through, talk through the anger. Anger is a normal, natural, human, God-given emotion. The key is dealing with it in a God-honoring way. Now we have a celebration. I'm going to ask Harmony if she'll come forward. And would you like um, your family or friends to come and stand with you? Um, may I please go get Logan? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Oh, Logan, right there, she would like you to come stand with her. Would you do that? Awesome. All right. Can you get a good shot here? Will you come stand in front right here for me? And then, Logan, you stand there right beside her. Good, good deal. Um, and uh, would you like your, your mom or grandma to come stand with you, too? Nope, we're going to do this on our own? Okay, awesome. No problem. So, uh, as I explained in children's time, baptism is something that in our tradition... Uh, is, is a big turn. It involves not only God claiming us, but us responding to God. And we do that, um, you know, obviously if we're really little, someone has to do that for us and help us. But at all ages, we are doing this in the context of the community of faith. And so you all, will have a part to play as well. But as Harmony and I talked, she understands these questions, and so she is going to be baptized as a professing member. And so she will then be taken into membership just like anyone else who is old enough or able enough to understand these questions. So I'm going to ask her, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I will. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I will. 
Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I will. Awesome. And now we have uh, the water and um, Harmony has chosen to be baptized, baptized by sprinkling. We observe a variety of methods in this church and allow whatever one is most comfortable with. So as I pour this water, We remember, we pray, eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, almighty God, through your son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. ask you if you will help and hold the water for me. Would you mind? Okay. It's a big bowl and it kind of sloshes a lot. But if you'll hold it right here for me, that would be wonderful. And Harmony, if you will step down and turn around and kneel down on that, like when you come to get communion, perfect. Okay. Harmony, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can just go back and stand with her. We're going to say one more thing, and the congregation is going to help us to welcome her. And now it's your turn. I ask you, as members of Christ's universal church, will you support her? Be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries and her growth in the spirit. If so, say, we will. We will. And now, as um, a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. And all of you, you have a response. It's on the back of your bulletin. You'll find that place. It's under our calendar. And down at the bottom, it says response. So, would you join me in saying this to Harmony? We rejoice to welcome you as a member of Christ's Holy Church and bid you welcome to First United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to support the church 
with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Thank you. Let us celebrate our new sister in Christ. Thank you, honey. Thank you for the honor of getting to officially welcome you into the body of Christ. I hope so. I hope so. And now, um, I want to invite all of you, if, uh, if you are so moved and looking for a place to be on the journey, if you would like to dedicate your life to Christ for the first time or rededicate your life to Christ because it's been a little while, or if you would like to, to find out about what the next step on your journey of faith is, we would love to help you with that. We'd love to welcome you as part of our community of faith. We're not perfect. We don't pretend that we are. We are committed to figuring it out together. So uh, if you would like to join, then you can come and let me know now or get in touch with me throughout the week. Let us stand, though, and sing once more together, Seek Ye First. for being here, for uh, joining in this celebration with us. We are so grateful that you are here to make us who we are together. My prayer for you this week is that you go recognizing the God-given emotions that you have as gifts and that you seek to use them in a God-honoring way. Go in peace, and I hope that you join us down at Heritage Hall. That's where Harmony and I will be. Um, and you can come and congratulate her and welcome her to the church there, and we can eat and celebrate our work together. So we'll see you there shortly. <laughs>